Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a overview here now that I have a Pad 7 from Big Tree Tech. I'm going to compare it to the Sonic Pad, which I did a review on not too long ago. I'll make a really quick kind of rundown for you right off the bat. If you only have Crowdy Ender style printers and you don't care about changing settings or having the latest features or anything like that, you just want Clipper on your Ender machine, get yourself a Crowdy pad, Sonic pad. Um, that's really the only use case for this, is if you have a Ender machine and you want to put Clipper on it the absolute fastest way and you don't care about behind the scenes kind of stuff or anything like that, if you just want to stay in the Ender 3 ecosystem and you just want Clipper, this is your this is your option and really the only reason you would choose a sonic pad the big tree tech pad 7 is much better for people who want to run all sorts of different clipper machines custom ones um whatever you can think of this is definitely a vanilla version of clipper officially fully supported clipper you can get the latest and greatest all the time. It runs Clipper screen. This would be my go-to for sure. Now, on paper, if you're comparing these two devices, and I see it happen a lot, is the biggest thing people look at is this has two gigs of RAM and this has one gig of RAM. RAM's not a huge issue, and it's especially not a big issue on the Pad 7, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but... One gig of RAM, you still can run multiple printers off this machine. These are both running um, very lightweight version of Linux, and it's totally suitable to run multiple printers on um, a device like this. This is equivalent to a Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, I've definitely run multiple printers on a Pi 3, so that's not a big deal. Um, I know this one does have an extra gig of RAM, but like I say, I would much prefer have a vanilla, officially supported, you know, direct from Clipper versions on here with Moonraker and all that kind of stuff. It's just much, much easier to, to work with, that type of thing. You're not pigeonholed into one little avenue. Um, as many of you know, I'm not a huge fan of Crowdy. I do understand why they do this. Um, Crowdy obviously wants a very, very nice user experience for someone just getting into Clipper. So they had to customize a whole bunch of this. Um, and that's why their version of Clipper is all kind of different and locked down and hacked up and that type of thing. It's the same thing with the Crowdy K1 3D printer. We know it runs Clipper, but it's fully locked down and all customized and things like that and, and made to cater to that printer only and try to lock users out and make it for beginners. So that's why I say if you don't care about anything else, you just want Clipper on your Ender machines, just do this, just do the Sonic Pad. Um, I've shown you kind of around the Sonic Pad here, but I'll take you over the um, Pad 7 here. Essentially we have a power button on the top. This is a push-in button. We have a USB port on the side here. We have a USB-C port on the side. It comes with a SanDisk really high quality micro SD card already in the box, which is awesome. On the back, we have two USB ports, a LAN port, we have some CAN headers here, and then also we have the SPI ADXL port. At least this scenario, you get a kind of standard ADXL. Um, I would still prefer these two devices to come with USB-C accelerometers. It, again, these are to make it easier for the user. Just package them with USB-C accelerometers. Um, I think it would be much better. And I would I would like to see Big Tree Tech and also Crowdy come out with USB-C accelerometers for, for those who want them. Um, what is really good about this device, in my opinion here on the back, is 
we have an upgradable bay here. So you can take the CB1 out and you can actually put in a Raspberry Pi CM4 compute module in here, which means you can run a four gig or eight gig memory version. That's why I'm not really concerned about the memory. You can upgrade this, whereas you cannot upgrade the Sonic pad. So again, really thought out on the pad seven part. So yeah, there's, I, I can keep this relatively short. Um, the pad seven is a little bit more compact than the Sonic pad. Um, might just fit in someone's desk a little bit more or if you wanted to position it in a different way or have it actually on the printer itself it's it's kind of like a more squared off uh smaller package but yeah i definitely prefer the pad 7 um i think it's just better for an enthusiast better for diyer that type of thing because it does run clipper screen and you can customize this fully get the latest stuff, all that kind of thing. So I don't, again, I don't really think you should pay too much attention to the memory. Um, pad seven is upgradable, which is awesome. If you need to do that a year or so down the road or whatever, maybe you have a whole bunch of printers you want to plug into this, but I don't think that should be a limiting factor in anyone deciding between the two. So thanks everyone for kind of watching my quick versus overview here on the two devices and I'll catch you all next time.